Okay. Hi. Hey. What's your name? Melissa Hilton. And how old are you? I'm 33. 33? Mm -hmm. Okay. Melissa. I'm from Denton. You're from Denton. Mm -hmm. And what is that on your side? It's an abscess. It's the size. It was the size of my hand. It's still pretty big, but. What happened? Um, I use methamphetamine, and so whenever I was shooting up in a vein, I missed a little bit, and it, um, this was a long time, this was like two weeks ago, because I had quit using it that way, I'd quit shooting up again, like I went through a depression, that's why I started shooting up again, so I stopped shooting up, and, um, but like four or five days ago, this just got really, really bad out of nowhere, and so, um, when I finally went to the hospital, because I was in so much pain, I couldn't stand it. And so the doctor told me I was septic and he had to lance it. And then the next morning, another doctor told me I wasn't septic. And so uh, I don't know, it's, but I know it's, it was an infection and they cut it open to drain it. And to stuff. drain it. But I had, um, I was in the, ho I was admitted in the hospital. I went downstairs. Somebody was stealing my bike. Like they had broke my bike lock and I need my bike. Like I can't afford to have somebody steal it. And when I told security, they said there was nothing they could do because nobody stole it. And I can make a report on the lock. And I'm like, well, can y'all watch my bike so I can go tell them what's going on? They said they can't promise anything. Well, I can't handle it. I can't lose my bike. So I took my bike home and to where I stay, like not home home, but I'm homeless. But I took it where I stay to have somebody watch it. And when I come back, they had already discharged me. And so I had to go back through the emergency. And I just left AMA, though, because they had me in the emergency all night. Nobody even looked at it. They looked at this. Nobody, like, tried to clean it. Nobody tried to put anything on it. Nothing. So I just, and then they tried to put me in a room with somebody else this morning. But they did that last night. Not last night. The night before last. I told them I don't want to be in a room with nobody else. I feel like that's a, protect, a violation of my, you know what I'm saying, health information. I have HIV. I'm HIV positive. So, I mean, I know I'm selling, like, millions of people right now, but you know whatever but so like i feel like you put me in a room with somebody and i'm hiv plot i don't want to wait you know what i'm saying in my business i feel like that's not right and so i don't know why they try to do it again but they try to do it again and i said I'll just give me the paperwork i'm leaving like i'll figure it out like i'm not y'all got me messed up <laughs> like i don't I, I think that even if you have to sit there and wait it's best for your health benefit to just get them to check that out so it won't be they did. They did check it out. They said they said that there's antibiotics, but it's just like because I came here in June, I got stabbed in the heart and I almost died. Um, they had to crack my chest. I've got a scar right here. They had to crack my chest and stuff like uh, I don't I don't even know if I can. Sh if you can, like, cover your breast yeah, and then I should see it. Uh, like, here's the scar like. Wow. And then what? the stab wound is just, there's the stab wound right there, just that little. How did that little thing cause for them to have to open you because up Because she pierced my heart, so I was dying. I was, I would have Bleeding died, out. yeah. I would have died except that I was um, right here on this sidewalk, but down further, and an ambulance just happened to be passing by. And so when I was here then, they treated me, you know what I'm saying, everybody treated me really well. I didn't have no issues. Like, I, I had no issues. I come in this time and it's like because because I they found out that I did this by drug use that all of a sudden you know what I'm saying I'm a homeless drug addict when who, who nobody you're cares not that about. important yeah so then that's how they've been treating me well like you got me messed up because I I am important and I am somebody and there are people who care about me and you're not gonna just treat me like I'm nothing so like since since I've held them to that standard like that's why I ended up just leaving because it's like they. They can't. They can't meet that. They can't. They can't they can treat me that. like I'm somebody. They can meet that. Well, they, it seems like they couldn't tr meet that. Like they couldn't treat me like I'm somebody. Like, and I'll probably end up going back. Like once I go home and see my husband, because my husband was supposed to be up here, but like he, they couldn't. He couldn't come in because I, I didn't have a room. They had me in the hallway, and so how is my husband supposed to come in if he? I'm supposed to be in a room. So, like, my husband probably just went home. Like, I haven't talked to him yet because my phone wasn't working. So, I mean, I don't know. My husband's probably going to make me go back, honestly, but I'm going to make him go with me. Cause, I mean, I, I just, I don't agree with treating people like they're nothing just because, you know what I'm saying, they're homeless. Just I know a lot of homeless people who have people who care about them. And, like, just because we're homeless and we're struggling and we're going through it doesn't mean that, 
we're not people and that people don't care about us. You know what I mean? Like, like I got family that cares about me that would probably be really upset at the way the hospital was treating me. Where, like, where is your family? Um, they're up in, near Denton and Munster and stuff. Like, I haven't. I called them to let them know I was here, but I haven't talked to them since like the whole bike incident happened. Like, the whole bike incident is really where like everything kind of fell apart because I had to leave. I, I mean, I just can't risk having my bike stolen. Like, can, I caught the dude in the act of stealing my bike. Can they help you financially? My family, they they've tried to help me. Um, they just they don't agree with I don't know how to say it like my family has helped me like I lived with them on my grandpa's property for a long time in my own house that my grandpa bought me um you know me and my ex-husband we my my not my ex-husband me and my ex um I was with him for 11 years we had like we had lots of money we had lots of cars we had lots of you know I mean I raised my daughter all of that it's just you know families have a certain way they want you to live you know what i mean like a certain they if they want to contribute yeah to they want to yeah right they want to so control you and, what what happened what with what my ha- family yeah with you living with your cars your so home your land my ex me and my ex split up which was for the best because he was very abusive and very he was a drunk and very abusive very he was not a good person i mean i'm not gonna say he was not a good person he was not a good boyfriend he treated me very badly he uh, anyway, he he ended, he ended up in prison for a felon in possession of a firearm for six years. So that's how God took him out of my life. He had left me, and I was trying to go back to him because that was what was comfortable. That's what I knew. But once God took him out of my life permanently, like by putting him in jail for five years, like then I realized that it, I was better off without him. Um, I still have my house and stuff, but the choices I made after that, like, ended up leading to, you know, I didn't do what my grandpa wanted. Like, I didn't live how my grandpa wanted. I didn't, uh, stuff like that. So, um, I mean, that's how I feel. That might not be the case. My grandpa might have seen it a different way. But to me, it seemed like my grandpa, if I didn't do what he wanted the way he wanted it, then he just, you know. What made you turn to drugs? Uh, I have been on on drugs since 2014. Since 2014, I believe, yeah. I was, I mean, I'm, I did drugs from 2014 till now. Like I worked, I had took care of my daughter. I had a job. I, all of that, I had multiple jobs. I ran a home business. Me and my ex-husband made $30,000 a month in, for three months in a row, buying and selling cars. Um, so, I mean, I've, I've, I've been functioning. It's just that whenever my, me and my ex, because my ex-husband did everything my grandpa wanted. My ex-husband was my grandpa's yes man. So that's why things went so well, you know what I mean? Like, but when I wasn't my grandpa's yes man, like, and doing everything he wanted the way he wanted, because I didn't agree with it, then, because, you know what I'm saying, like, my grandpa would drive drunk with my daughter in the car. I don't agree with that. I don't care who you are, I don't agree with that. Mm-hmm. I, wouldn't let, I wouldn't let my ex do it, I'm not letting you do it. Like, you nobody's driving drunk with my kids in the car. That's crazy. And so, like, I wouldn't let my ex do it with my stepkids in the car. You got me messed up. So like stuff like that, they just they just I don't know. They just did things how they wanted, and I just didn't agree with them all the time. Like yes, I do drugs, but that doesn't mean that I'm just woohoo. Let's drive drunk with the kids in the car and all that crazy news. You right. know what I mean? Like really, um, like I really honestly believe. It. And a lot of people say like people use drugs to self medicate for issue other issues. You know what I mean? Was that like, for you? And I think that's the case. Like eighty, I think I'm ADHD, and just nobody ever knew it. Cause so in school. I had a lot of issues with like focusing and paying attention, but nobody ever diagnosed me with ADHD. My parents never, I guess, noticed. Like really, it, they just said I was just a bad kid. But I grad when I was um, my junior year in high school, I went to an alternative school because I had failed, and so I was like a freshman. I was classified as a freshman because I only had six and a half credits, but I was taking sophomore classes. But I was, but it was my junior year in high school. So like I would have had to be in school like two or three more years. So I went to an alternative school. I did my sophomore year, my junior year, and my senior year, and my exit test in five months. You're smart. I'm very smart. And it's just that I don't. I have a trouble paying attention. And how and was your childhood with your parents? Was there any trauma? My or dad. Anything? My dad went to prison when I was ten for drugs. 
So um, I was just with my mom and that's the thing, like I'm, I was a daddy's girl, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I love my dad, like that's my everything. But my mom, she wasn't so good. How were you guys' relationship? How do you remember her treating you as a child? I mean, I don't, I don't remember her ever really treating me bad as a kid, like, but I remember, you know what I'm saying, like not getting along with her. I remember stuff like that. Like, I don't really remember being like how she treated me like when I was young. I know from the time I was like 14 or 15 up, like I could call her and she'd come pick me up if I was drunk somewhere, you know, cause if I was drinking or something. But like, as when I turned 17, 18 and I had, cause I graduated when I was 16. So when I turned 17 and I was hanging out with 18 year olds and 19 year olds and drinking and stuff like that, my mom was sleeping with my friends. So, I mean, you know. When did you find that out? Years later? Or? No, I, I, I knew it. Like my mom, for my 17th birthday, I think, my mom went to the bar with my homegirl and left me at home, but went and bought me two beers and was like, here you go, happy birthday. Like she so just, you knew her yeah, activities she just, she kinda, with people your age. Yeah, she was just drinking with us and, and, and at the time, like, to me, it was cool, you know, like, oh, yeah, until she started sleeping with the guys that I was talking to or dating, that wasn't cool. It's kind of um, weird. Yeah, that kind of, like, that hurt a lot. And then, like, it seemed, I don't know, she just, then she started dating, like, um, two of them she dated for a while, so then she kind of calmed down and stopped drinking as much. I know, it's... it's... No, I have the same story. <laughs> it's, it, it's very weird. <laughs> it, it's weird. <laughs> yeah. Would you mind in getting to how you contracted HIV? Because um, you you look healthy. You, you I, don't I look... take my medicine. I take my medicine. The the whole depression thing. Like I had let my medicine lapse. Because how we, did you get it? How did I, uh, my husband? He gave it to you. Yes, and like it, it that it is wrong and it is not right and he should have told me he had it and all of that. But I chose, you know what I'm saying? I chose to forgive him and I love him. I understand that like it, you know, it's something still very hard for him to take. Like, how long did he have it? I, I don't, he had it, he only had it for like a year. His story is a lot, a lot more crazy than mine. Like, cause he dropped from one of these platforms right here mm -hmm. and fell 40 feet and landed on his feet and mm. broke his left ankles or no, his, his right ankle, his left foot, his left leg. He had to be in a wheelchair for a year. Um, he he was, you know what I'm saying? And he he worked two jobs his entire life. So he's really like, um, he's really like manly, you know what I mean? Yeah, mo so, mobile, physically. So then for him to have been hurt like that and be put in a wheelchair like that, you know what I'm saying? And then I, that's the same time he found out he was HIV positive and he doesn't even know where he got it. So he... It, you know what I mean? So I have to, I take the, all that, the, all those things into consideration when I think about like, I don't think he just did it maliciously. Like he meant just to, didn't yeah, know. he, like he loved me and you know what I mean? Like he, maybe he just didn't know how to tell me or something. Cause I met him about a year after, right after he got out of the wheelchair Yeah, and he was in the wheelchair for a year. So yeah. like, I just think that maybe he just didn't know how to tell me or something. You know what I mean? How, I how did that. you feel about it when you first, when I first found, found out, out like, how was I your mean, emotions? I was upset. I was, um, honestly, I'm really a roll with the punches kind of person. Like, I know that you can take a pill and live, you know what I'm saying, a normal life. And so, to me, and to me, like, I was with my husband, like, and so we'd already been having sex. So it was like, at first I thought I got it from um, using needles and stuff like that. But then when I told my husband he needed to go get checked, he's like, I already have it. And I'm like, Oh, so you, you know what I mean? Like, so I had emotions about that. I was like, I didn't know how to feel. I was angry. I was, uh, but then like, I really sat there and examined everything and I'm like, okay, okay. So then, um, <laughs> so then I was like, um, you know, I, I still love him. Like, and at the end of the day, like, I still want to be with him. Like this doesn't affect us being together, obviously. So I just, I've tried, cause he obviously wasn't taking his medicine as he was supposed to. And so like, I've just been on his case about, you know, you, you making sure that he takes care of himself and does what he does. Mm -hmm. And obviously I don't have to worry about him giving it to anybody else because, you know. Yeah. I mean? If you could 
encourage a girl or a young lady or a male that's watching this video, what would you tell them? So, so much. I would tell them that definitely, I know that sex until marriage is a little outdated and a lot of people don't do that, but if you can do, um, if you can't, always use protection, always, because you never know, because the guy, my, my, my husband is not a bad person and I love him dearly and anybody who met him would love him, but you know, he just made a bad choice and didn't tell me. And, and he didn't look like he had it. And he didn't look like the type of person. He didn't. It, he didn't look like the type of person. I probably don't look like the type of person you have it. When I tell people, they're like, really? Like, and, and it's, I, I go through it a lot because I don't like putting everybody in my business. But, you know, um, I'm not bad looking. And so people hit on me all the time and they don't understand why I'm, you know what I mean? Like, because, like, if me and my husband break up or whatever, which has happened, like, for we broke up a couple of weeks at a time here and there. It's like people hit on me and it's like, dude, no, they don't understand. Like, I'm not, it's not for me, it's for you. You know what I mean? Like, I'm trying to let you know, like, hey, like, not that I, because I take my medicine, so it's not like I can give it to them, but it's like, I don't always want to put everybody in my business. You know what I mean? So you just, it changes your life in a lot of ways because, like, also, I got to take my pill every day. Like, I can't forget. Like, I can't lose it. it you can become, your, your body can become immune to your medicine, so you got to switch your medicine. The medicine's very expensive. It's like three thousand dollars a month. You have to get help. Like I'm homeless, so they pay for mine. But you know what I mean. I don't Estate. know that it would be the same for somebody who has a job and live. You know what I mean. I'm sure it would. I'm sure that they'd be able to find some way to help them because there's a lot of resources for people with HIV. Fortunately, but it's just it's not something that infections. Infections are way worse than because I've had abscesses my whole life. I'm used to them, so I mean they're no big deal to me. Like because. Um, I was overweight my whole life, you know what I mean? Like, I don't look like it, but I was 450 pounds before I met my husband. Like, when I, I went to jail for six months, and when I went to jail, I lost a whole lot of weight. I went from, like, a 5X uniform to an extra large while I was locked up. So I lost a lot of weight. I lost a lot more when I got out of jail. My husband got me riding a bike and being healthy. That's a lot of the reason I survived the stabbing is because I was so healthy, like, um, I was on my bike every day, like riding my bike. And so I think that's a lot of the reason that I survived that. Otherwise I might not have survived that, but I would definitely encourage y'all to just like, you know what I'm saying? Get to know people before you try to be intimate with them. You want to use protection if you are intimate with them. You want to make sure that you know, because they, I don't feel like they stress it enough. They stressed it a lot when I was a kid because it was more dangerous because HIV could kill you and things like that. But nowadays they don't stress it enough. You need, need to know you you know what I'm saying what's going on with your sexual partner who you're who you're dating yeah because there's a there like there was a guy in the homeless community that was spreading HIV to women without telling them knowingly yeah knowingly and and there was a lot of women that contracted it that and that you just never know like because this is a dude that you would never even know was homeless if you met him at the grocery store you know what I mean he like his his charm and his swag and how he like you would never ever know he was homeless. Like, he just don't seem like that type of guy, but he was knowingly spreading. He didn't care. Like, wow. Okay. So you just, you just want to be, and you just want to take care of your health because you, you're not going to be young forever. That's like the main thing. You're not going to be young forever. I'm getting old now and I'm just, I, I'm too old. Okay.